Well, hello friends, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time joining me for a devotional, I'm really glad you found the channel. I know you probably Googled something like daily devotionals or devotionals for women, and here you are. It's nice to meet you. My name is Whitney Mead. I have been running this channel now for about six years, and it has grown astronomically, and I love teaching the word here. Thank you for joining me. This is Daily Devo, and I have a word for you for 2022 that I think is going to be very impactful for what the Lord has planned for you this year. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I have a new talent that I have discovered. Um, it started out as a little hobby, and now I'm kind of like rolling with it, and I'll talk more about that as we go into our lesson, but it is art, and this is an example of the art. Um, so if you want to check out my art, you can check out at Whitney Mead Art on Instagram. I also am on TikTok for art stuff, so you can find me there at Whitney Mead Art as well. I got kicked off TikTok last year, banned from TikTok after I had some really viral videos about um, the election theft and all that kind of stuff, so I had to make a completely new one. I kind of felt like it was a badge of honor to be banned from TikTok. It's like, are you really a patriot unless you've been banned from TikTok? It's like, yes, I got it. So anyways, Let's dive into our lesson for today. Stop talking about social media. Let's dive into the word of God. I want to pray for us before we begin, and then let's get to it. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your word today. I pray that you would pour your Holy Spirit out through my words and through the words of your word, and that this would land on good soil and be fertilized and grow into an exponential harvest. It's in Jesus' name that we pray in all things. Amen. So the parable of the talents, if you are a seasoned believer, you will be aware of this story. If you are a new believer, this is going to be a new story for you. And I think that it is, um, it's a really impactful one. So before, before I give you all of the points and dive into the lesson, I think we need to read the story in its entirety first, and then we'll dive in. So we are in Matthew today. This is Matthew 25, verse 14. Now, this is the passage that comes right after the parable of the ten virgins who prepared their oil in their lamps and waited for the bridegroom, and half of them fell, you know, they all fell asleep. Half of them ran out of oil. The other half had oil, they met the groomsmen, and they went into the bridal party. This is the next story after that, and this is Jesus teaching. So these are Jesus' words. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who has called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought another five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, 
Here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord gifts each of us, every single human being who is born is gifted with gifts from the Father. Those gifts are time, talent, resources, desires, the things in woven into your soul that make you who you are. I've been given certain gifts. You've been given other gifts. They're all different and they're all given to us so that we will utilize them for the kingdom of God in our own personal lives. And then the Lord just takes that, weaves it together and spreads it across the earth for his glory. You have to think of God as a loving father. He has given you these time, this time, these talents, these resources for you to use them. But what I want to ask you today is, are you using the time, talent, and resources that God has given to you? Or are you acting like the servant who was scared and fearful and dug a hole and put the bag of money in the ground and then, you know, there was no harvest after that happened? The Lord gives us these gifts according to our abilities. And I want to acknowledge to you that you probably have had moments in your life where you you have felt very unworthy, that you felt very um, unskilled, that you maybe feel like an imposter, like have imposter syndrome, um, or you've had jealousy of someone who is more talented than you and has been given more resources than you or seemingly more gifts than you. This is a biblical principle. The Lord shows us in the word that certain people actually do get more than other people. Um, it's not, not anything to be upset about. It is just a biblical principle. One of the servants was given five talents, the other was given two, and then the last one was given one. So we can see clearly that there was a person who was given five. He was given more because his, his master acknowledged that he had the ability, he, he had the innate ability to manage that those five talents. And then to the last one, he gave him one. Don't you think that was because the master already had a discernment that the, that wicked, lazy servant would not be able to manage the money? There's a reason he didn't give him five talents. So if you are overwhelmed by the thought of, well, I, I need to be like her or I need to be like him. I need to be managing more than this. Maybe God's only given you what you can manage. You are supposed to take those things and sow them so that the Lord can reap a harvest from what he's gifted you with. When the Lord gives us gifts and talents, there is a supernatural law called the law of the law of harvest, the law of reaping and sowing. Um, we are literally seeing this played out in our in our world right now. Um, We are suffering the consequences of evil being sown into the ground of our globe for years and years and years. We did not get to the position that we are in right now overnight. This has been strategically planned for a very, very long time. Now, many of us are just having our eyes opened it to it for the first time because in God's grace, he's allowed us to see so that we can take a stand and change it with our words and change it with vision. But we have to become aware of it first. 
Friend, I'm gonna tell you this right now. We are in a terrible situation because very evil people have been allowed to rule unchecked for a very long period of time. It is time now for the body of Christ to stand and to say no more. We will no longer let evil seeds be planted in rulership over our land, over our globe. We are going to take those seeds and pull them out of the ground and cast them away and replant with seeds of righteousness in government, in politics, in finances, in family, all of the things, all of the mountains of culture. It's time for us to replant. And you have been gifted with gifts from God to participate in this hour. The past two years, we have been focusing, I personally have been focusing on exposing the evil. But now that you see the evil, it's time for us to stop giving Satan the glory by paying attention to what he's doing and shift our focus to what the Lord wants us to do now, what the Lord wants us to do next. He's given you five talents, two talents, one talent. He's asking you, child of God, use this talent, plant this seed so that we can reap a harvest of righteousness in the globe. That's what he wants with you. you this is not all on your shoulders either. What he does is we plant, we're obedient to plant, and he meets us supernaturally maximizes our efforts, and then he is responsible for the harvest. You are not responsible for the harvest. All he's calling you to do is plant the seeds. Use your time. Use your talents. Use your resources. I want to teach you about something called the spirit of a slave. Now, we know that in the word, the Israelites were often held in literal bondage by their enemies as they would allow um, idol worship and the culture of the people who surrounded them to creep into their lives, and that left them uncovered, and they would have, you know, militaries come in and take over, and it was just a cycle with the Israelites of bondage and slavery over and over and over again. We know that Jesus came to earth to pay the price for us once and for all so that we, we, we would be completely free of the bondage of slavery for the rest of our lives and for eternity. The United States of America was founded on the premise of freedom. We in naturally, innately have a spirit of freedom that is sown into our country. It's sown into our governing documents. And so the enemy has attempted everything he possibly can, everything he can to root out freedom. He hates freedom. He wants us in bondage. He wants us to be slaves. He wants us in bondage to our addictions. He wants us in bondage to pain. He wants us in bondage to circumstances that we can't break free of that keep us in mental torment. He wants to keep you there. And you can see that played out in the natural with our own corrupt government that has attempted to keep us locked down and enslaved over the past two years. What do you think they're doing when they're masking you? What do you think they're doing when they're telling you you can't leave your home, you can't run your business? That is the exact opposite of what the United States of America was founded on. So the evil that has been ruling is this, is this harvest of bad seed for decades. And it is time for that to be broken in the name of Jesus, and it will only be broken when the children of God take their stand. And I am calling for you today to take your stand. You may not be hearing this from your pastor. I wish it was different. But I am telling you today, the Lord brought you to this video so that you can hear this message that he has gifted you 
with talents. I believe he's gifted you with the maximum, the five talents. And he is asking you in your sphere of influence with your gifts of time, resources, personal giftings, your spiritual gifts, to use them to fight this war, to take a stand for the freedom that has been sown into our country. It's time for that to be called out again. It's time for us to declare freedom once again. So what happens if we don't? What happens if we let this moment pass us by and we don't take action? What happens if we don't speak the words? You know, the Lord says we prophesy the end from the beginning. I used to believe that 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 meant that when we prophesied, we were prophesying a separation. We were prophesying the time, the a length of time. But I've come to learn recently that, and it's been very strongly just poured into my heart, that what that means is we stand at the beginning of a situation and the Lord prophetically gives us a vision of the end. And we speak the words out loud of what the end result is going to be. So we prophesy the end of an event standing at the beginning of the event. And in this situation that we're in right now, where we have a coup government that has taken over, we have a media that will not recognize the theft of an election, we have a global, uh, a global effort to kill as many human beings as possible with coronavirus, and whatever else they have planned, we as believers have to see, we have to speak out loud what we see in the future. Now, if you follow the prophetic community, you will know that what's already been spoken out loud, that there is victory for believers, that there is victory for our countries, that there will be freedom once again. We all hoped that that was going to happen two years ago, but in his grace, the Lord had a bigger, better plan. He, he needed us to be awoken. He needed us to have our, our, you know, our eyes revealed to the truth of our bondage and our slavery so that we can speak forth no more. Um, it's time for you to ask the Lord for vision for 2022 for your family. You have to break out of the bondage of worry and fear of what's controlled you for the past two years. Once you break that bondage, once you say, we as a family are not going to, we're not participating. We're, we're not going to participate in the lie anymore. We're not going to participate in the fear. We're not going to accept bondage and slavery because we are free children of God. And not only that, we are free American citizens. It is our literal God-given right to be free. And all these things are giving giving back to us. Are, we're actually never theirs to give back to us to begin with. They've always been ours. When you say that out loud, when you start to speak that out loud, the spirit of bondage and slavery has to go. It has to leave your family. The rest of the world can be functioning in, in bondage and slavery, and we know that that will be a part of the world until Jesus comes back and he's ruling and reigning again, and the world is perfect. But for your family, you can make the difference today. You can choose to break that bondage over your family today. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for a, a president to return, the rightful president to return. You don't have to wait for COVID to go away. You don't have to wait for the vaccine mandates to be eradicated. You don't have to wait for those things. You can walk in freedom right now. Here's how you do it. You go before the throne of God and you say, Father, I refuse to be in bondage any longer. I am going to ask you to reveal to me the end from today, from the beginning. Give me the vision 
for my life and my family's life. And if you're called to a greater calling to, than that, I'm, I'm called to the United States of America. I ask the Lord, Lord, give me the vision for the United States of America. What is the country going to look like? What do you want to see come to fruition for the country? And then I take that vision and I walk in that vision. That is my future. I'm not going to believe what they're telling me over here. I'm not going to believe that this is our new normal because it's not our new normal. Do you really think that the God of the universe wants this for our lives? Absolutely not. It's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely terrible. Um, so you go before the throne. You get your marching orders. You ask for the vision. He gives you the vision. The next step is to speak it out loud. Have a conversation with your spouse about what that looks like for your future. Ask your spouse, what have you seen for our family? And then you start speaking it out loud every single day. Because when you speak it out loud, you're making a highway, a prophetic highway for you to walk on that walks you into that future and causes that future to come to fruition. Daily, you will take a step in that direction. And every time you're doing that, you're planting another seed. You're using your talents. And he will supernaturally meet you and multiply it. I just feel so strongly that this message is for you today. You are supposed to hear this today. Whoever you are, wherever you are in the world, I declare that the bondage of slavery will be broken over your life right now in the name of Jesus and by his mighty hand. You no longer have to be enslaved like that wicked servant who had the spirit of a slave who was afraid of his master. You may not be afraid of God, but you might be living in fear, which means that you don't fully trust your heavenly father. His plans for you are the best plans for you. His best for you is the best for you. And unless you ask him for vision and direction, you're not going to receive that best. You have to partner with the Lord. You have to have a relationship with him. You have to go to him and hear what he has to say for your life. Do not be afraid. I'm going to tell you right now, it's bigger than anything you could ever imagine for yourself. It is bigger and it is scary sometimes to see it. But you have to understand that you're already seated in heavenly places. Your future throne in heaven is already established. You can rule and reign from that place today, wherever you are, whatever you circumstance you find yourself in, and he can change your circumstances like that. He can turn it on a dime. He can do it in a day. I believe that we're going to see that for our country. I believe that we're going to see it for your family. I believe that we're going to see it for the globe. It can all change in a day. I'm being reminded right now by the Holy Spirit of the weather patterns that we're seeing. Um, we are going to see some really bizarre weather patterns over the next couple of months. And I want to remind you when you see that, know that that is Almighty God reminding the corrupt leaders of this globe that they are not in control. They're not in control. They can try as hard as they can, but ultimately the Lord reigns. I hope this message was encouraging for you today. I'm so glad that you joined me. And if you would like to go deeper in your relationship with God, I have a $7 Bible study called the seven day kickstart. I want to encourage you to go check that out. It is seven days of daily steps in growing in your faith. You can join that at seven day kickstart.org. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe, click the bell button, and you will get notified every time I put a new video out. And thank you for joining me. I love you guys. I believe that this year is going to be absolutely incredible for you. And I can't wait to celebrate our victory of freedom on that amazing special day. I'll see you next time.